Welcome to 28th lecture of video course on tribology. Topic of today's presentation is rolling element bearing. This kind of bearings are most commonly used. In other words, every industrial machine have or has some rolling element bearings. Reason being, they operate on the rolling motion and we always prefer rolling motion compared to linear motion. What we say? Rotation is always easier than linear motion. Reason being, low friction and moderate lubricant requirement. We have studied what is the function of lubricant what is the importance of lubricants and we know to reduce the friction as well as fail. We require lubricant. In rolling element bearings, friction and wear are very low. That is why we require low value or smaller quantity of the lubricant. And in many times, even if there is a no lubricant, bearing can survive for some time. There is a discontinuity of a lubricant bearing can survive. Depends on the rotating speed, it can survive from few minutes to few hours to few days. This is the reason why we require rolling element bearings. Another thing which is important for the rolling element bearing is standardization. These bearings are mass produced, they have very good surface surface and they work with elastrohydronomic lubrication mechanism. As these bearings are produced in mass, the cost is relatively cheaper. Assembly and disassembly is much easier and that is why we say if we can buy something, why to produce it? When we know very well the production is going to cost more than what we are buying. That is why we said if we if you can buy it, do not make it and that intimates us or that leads to us selection, what we say the bearing selection, bearing needs, bearings need to be selected. We do not design the bearings or we do not design the rolling element bearing, but there is a problem. If I say we do not design the bearing, there is a problem. Somebody must be designing it for us, mass producing it and selling in the market. If we just select a bearing and some guidance and fit in the machine, there is a possibility of the failure. Reason being, we have not understood the all mechanism, all the physics of the bearing. So, if we want proper life of the bearing, we should understand the concepts. Without that, there is a possibility bearing may function very well, may not function at all. I remember one incident when we wanted to operate one machine at very high speed and all the specifications were given to the manufacturer. Machine must have specification and fitting other bearing. For his convenience, manufacturer tried to use some sort of the grease and that bearing failed in no time because of the improper selection of the creases. So, what we say that understanding bearing is important, understanding rolling element bearing is important, understanding the concepts related to the rolling element bearings are important and that is why we are going to discuss those in today and next lecture, how this rolling element bearing behave, work and operate. I am uh, at the start, I am discussing a one case study which we did for the one of the industry, what we call is that is industry related to the rolling mill stand. That figure shows, this is the rolling mill, function is to reduce the thickness of sheet. Maybe say thickness may be initially around 
10 mm and we want to reduce this thickness to 3 mm or 4 mm. We require some sort of rollers and those rollers need to be supported on the bearing for the perfect alignment and those bearing fail in no time. That is why I say that two large roller bearings when we are using the word large because uh, their ID inner diameter was 865 mm which is reasonably large and outer dimension of the bearing was 1.18 meter is pretty large. Those bearings both the two bearings were mounted and both the bearing failed. Now, cost of the each bearing was very high when we say in a rupees it was a more like 35 lakh rupees or more than 70,000 dollars one bearing and those bearing fail in no time expected life of those bearing were roughly 40,000 hours or we say the 5 years and those bearing failed one bearing fell in 105 hours other bearing fell in 300 hours and this is what we are saying when they were dismantled in that much time actual operating time was slightly lower than this. So, one bearing which was supposed to show 40,000 hours of operation is showing only the 105 hours. Our bearing which is again supposed to show 40,000 operating hours is showing only 300 hours or in uh, survivability or reliability point of view if I consider they show only the reliability of 0.5 or we say that 0.5 percent that means 0.5 divided by 100 and 1 percent and 1 divided by 100. So, that is the reliability so low reliability there is a possibility the bearing failed because of the accessible load if something went wrong in a machine some is spark and the load has suddenly increased of 4 to 10 times and bearing failed. Second option is that bearing which was purchased was not improper or bearing was improper. Third option is the bearing was not mounted properly. Our fourth option is the bearing was not designed properly. There are all possibilities when we try to investigate the value we need to explore all the options and we did that. I am not going into detail of those uh, investigations but few slides I am just trying to show that a slim mistake or a lack of understanding many times create a lot of problem. These are the figures of the failed bearing you can see the bearing outer ring which failed and these are the number of pieces we are able to see the number of cracks which are the deep crack from one surf one end of the outer ring to other end of the outer ring the deep crack is more like an cutting by the knife in pieces. So, we are cutting some fruit in a number of pieces. Interesting thing is that this value is happening only one fourth of the ring, three fourth of the ring is same a single piece it has not failed. When I see the closer of this when we magnify it we are able to see some kind of failure is something like a some corrosion happening here and which is also magnified and shown over here there are some corrosion mark that in any case water plays important role or there is acid environment then it plays important role. We need to check whether bearing was operated in the water environment or acidic environment. There is another failure the hole uh, failure near the hole and these holes are the tapped holes threading was done there is a possibility that some thread failed and because of that stress concentration increased and because of that there was a crack generated and once it one crack generated at lead to generation of number of other cracks there is a possibility. And there is a possibility of some sort of the brutal failure of course, when we see a magnified view of that we are able to see the beach marks and the beach mark is the significance of the fatigue value that means, this bearing failed in under fatigue under corrosion under the accessible load and uh, because of the some sort of a hole where the stress concentration increased significantly. So, when we are able to uh, we are we are seeing the figures 
you are able to um, guess a number of things, corrosion may be reason or uh, hole uh, which is causing the stresses or high stresses or raising stresses may be a failure cause or fatigue is uh, another failure cause or is a short cycle or low cycle fatigue and there is a possibility of very high load suddenly applied on the bearing. Of course, one kind of the failure will lead to other kind of failure, there is always there, but we need to find out what was the root cause, what was the main reason of this failure. So, what we did? You say okay, well, we can go hard with some sort of uh, finite element study, generate a three dimensional model, and uh, that was a uh, bearing which was uh, under investigation was a four row cylindrical roller bearing. So, what we did? We assumed that there is a symmetry of the mid plane, we analyze only half of the bearing, one side of the bearing. And when we analyze that, we, they are, we are able to see there are two roller rows. This is a one roller row, there is a another roller row. This is the outer ring and this is the inner ring. We know bearing which is a fixed in a rolling uh, in a rolling mill will be fixed at the boundary and the inner ring will be rotating in this. So, we fix outer ring completely no degree of freedom. So, there is no motion in rotational direction obviously, the there is no rotation, there is no linear translation completely frozen. All six degree, six degree of freedoms have been frozen. We did analysis. When we did analysis assuming the all the cylinders, all the rolling elements are bearing the load, what we get? Stresses are very low in that situation and the factor of safety is 19, but this bearing failed and what we are able to see the factor of safety is a 1919 that is too high. We should not design any bearing for more than factor of safety more than 2.5 or 3. That means, something is wrong in investigation, we find some problem over here. What are the reasons of this kind of failure? When analysis show that factor of safety is pretty high, very very high, then we found there was some clearance between the bearing, bearing was not preloaded and whenever there is a clearance in a bearing, only some portion of bearing will be loaded, it is not a complete bearing which gets loaded something like that, these are the inner ring, there is an outer ring and assuming there are rolling element in between, that spring connection it shows a rolling element in between. When the load is applied and there is a clearance between inner ring, outer ring, I would say dimension of inner ring plus dimension of roller is still lesser than inner dimension of outer ring, then there will be clearance. What will happen in the situation, inner ring will slightly shift downward. If it is shifting downward, all the rollers which are on the top will not be loaded at all. In addition, because of clearance, this may there is a possibility of even the extent of the load is lesser than 180 degree. And when we did examination, we found only the one fourth of the bearing is loaded three fourth of the bearing is unloaded or we say that major load is being contributed by one fourth of the ring and that is a problem as well as advantage. What is the problem? Because uh, the, this one fourth quarter or the one, uh, one fourth of the quarter of the ring is bearing the load, the load amount the maximum value of the load is increasing. But second or the good point is that we can rotate this ring by 90 degree after certain duration. So, the all the all our four quarters can be subjected to the load and it is a fatigue loading. So, what we will say that one fourth of the bearing will sustain few cycles, then next uh, quarter will like sustain few cycles, then next quarter will sustain few cycles. So, with that kind of rotation we can get good results. 
and that is happening in a rolling uh, mills okay, so that in actual industry what they do they divide outer ring in a four zone they write zone 1 here maybe zone 2 here 180 degree phase zone 3 and 270 degree phase zone 4 and what did they uh, arrange the way they assemble initially they will arrange a zone 1 directly under load and after a couple of months they will rotate by 90 degree. So, the second load zone can come into the picture after second then will be third then th after third there will be fourth and after fourth again it will be one. So, there is uh, some sort of uh, load shearing in terms of cycles right. So, the first time mounting that is directly done the load zone 1 is being capped along the direction of load and after some period what uh, industry was operating with a 1000 um, operating hours they used to rotate by 90 degree right. So, whatever we are doing about what we did in the finite element modeling we did myth made a mistake we assume the bearing is completely loaded and that is why that is why the factor of safety was very high. I know we know very well is only one fourth of that ring is loaded. So, I can simply say 19 divided by 4 factor of safety is decrease, but still the factor of safety is on a higher side. Still, it is coming really the nearby the 5. Then there is another reason we say that even the one fourth quarter, obviously, one fourth a ring quarter of the ring is loaded, but only the some person will take maximum load and the remaining portion will not take that much load and this is the load distribution. Maximum load at point where load is applied, load is distributed reaches to 0 value near by the 90 degree or near by the quarter, uh, quarter of the ring that means, there is a non-linear distribution of the load and it will not be distributed the way we did in finite element analysis. That means, we need to modify that analysis come up with the better results and this is a what would good conclusion that after doing that finite element analysis we understood we are doing some mistake that is why we need to modify it or we another word if I assume the bearing is only the selection then this kind of mistakes will happen, but if we understand there is a clearance because of the clearance bearing will not be loaded completely, if only the one portion of the bearing outer ring will be loaded, then I am able to understand the physics, I am able to modify, I realize my mistake and we did modification. Right? So, what we say when we talk about the 40,000 operating hours which was the first slide on this lecture, we say that this bearing was supposed to show a 40,000 operating hours in real sense. If there are four quarter, uh, four quarter of this string, bearing is supposed to show 10,000 operating hour per quarter, it is not a 40,000 directly. What we need to do analysis is based on the 10,000 operating hour, not 40,000 operating hours. Then second observation. Of course, first we say that even the 19 divided by 4 and non-linear TP account is so the factor of safety is on the higher side. Second observation was there yeah, when we are saying that one quarter of the si uh, ring is sustaining the load, we arrange this one quarter and found there is a hole at the center and this load uh, uh, at this center obviously uh, this hole load is directly imposed. So, there is a problem hole being in the line of maximum load is a problem even in ordinary mechanical engineering or ordinary design we will not be doing this option. And when we did investigation what we found the four holes of this diameter and depth 45 mm were drilled as well as the tapped to facilitate the handling because the bearing weight is very high 
it cannot be transported from one place to other place by the manual labor. So, they used to uh, they, they use uh, cranes and cranes to, uh, uh, to lift uh, this ring by crane we required some sort of arrangement and that is why they did it. In a uh, number of machineries or with a number of companies they use a magnetic attachment, but uh, in this company they were using this kind of uh, chain arrangement to transport this ring from one place to other place and that has caused a problem. When we did a more study we found that holes can be drilled there is no problem as such. So, from the design point of view it is possible because we know that the one uh, quarter the end of the one quarter the two sides I can drill a hole where the load will be much lower compared to the maximum load over here. Obviously, the even the whatever the load at this corner may be only the 30 to 40 percent compared to the load which is coming at the center. Even in this in this situation I can tap the hole, I can raise the sum factor so by 2 to the stress concentration may be 2, 2 to 0.5, but still the load is only 30 to 40 percent we are set or the ring is set bearing is not going to fail. We can design such a manner. The problem comes when bearing came out of the company they were only the marks 1, 2, 3, 4 as a load marks or we say that there is a load zone marks, but when it was arranged for the manufacturing or we say the drilling hole and the tapping the hole. A person who was doing it if all that this one marking, two marking, three and four is done for the hole. There was a lack of understanding that why this marking has been done for that person. So, he drilled the hole on that load zone itself or nearby that. And person who was assembling it, he know only one thing that there is a load zone 1, load zone 2, load zone 3, load zone 4, I need to assemble like that. So, there is a misunderstanding, if the we are not well educated then the problems will come and that has happened over here. In the first crack which is started it was a near the hole, obviously the hole was slightly away from the surface up of the loads and that the stress concentration worked crack was uh, initiated or we say started from the thread profile itself and it has gone deeper. And once we know the bearing was in two pieces after that it cannot sustain load it came turn out to be uh, division based on the rollers. So, that we did in a finite element analysis and figure out yeah that if a load is applied like that and the hole is arranged this manner there is a going to be crack and that will be instantaneous crack bearing have survived 105 hours that was too much from that point of view bearing was supposed to fail instantaneously of course because of the rotation the load point was continuously changed or roller was continuously changing so that was a stresses a higher and then lower value that is why it could survive for the 100 hours always this kind of bearing arrangement is not supposed to survive that is why when we did an investigation we figure out yeah there is a load zone one and there should be hole instead of this arrangement hole and load zone 1 in the same place if we just tilt by 45 degree or we say the hole arrangement here load zone arrangement here then hole arrangement then load zone arrangement in a such a manner then bearing should survive because what we are doing in fact we are distributing the load in fact we say the more or less in a such a manner the every portion of bearing is loaded equally that is permitted that is uh, viable and when we did that we found uh, bearing was working well and there was no complaint at all and that is what we say that just simple understanding of the bearing helps a lot. Company lost a lot of money in the production because of bearing failure mill will stop no fabrication then there is a problem of uh, production loss as well as goodwill loss. So, when we have some understanding about the bearing we can avoid this kind of failure and we do not know when this kind of knowledge will be required the simple knowledge. So, we should always acquire a good knowledge related to the tribal systems and there is a possibility to avoid this kind of failure. 
That is why we start with the bearing topic, we say that uh, there are some terminology. So, there are a few terms which are used for the rolling element bearing and we say whenever we say the rolling element bearing we should understand there are four main components. Four main components are inner ring, rolling elements, cage and outer ring. Now, why we are requiring this kind of inner ring and outer ring and there is a separation by some rolling element. So, there is a possibility the inner ring is rotating or there is a possibility outer ring is rotating, any arrangement is possible. But what when we talk about the tribal system, we know there is a relative speed. If inner ring is rotating, there is a possibility outer ring will not rotate because we want isolation. We do not want to transmit a motion which is happening on the shaft surface to the housing surface. That is why we use this kind of bearing, this kind of isolation. We use fitting in a such a manner this uh, inner ring with the shaft goes with a some sort of a transition fit or interference fit. Outer ring also goes with a some sort of transition fit with the housing. And this kind of a rolling elements are arranged in a such a manner, they do not collide with each other and that is why we require a cage. And we say the cage is used to separate the rolling elements. The rolling element is start colliding with each other, they will, in, they will interfere each other's option, they will reduce the rolling velocity, obviously that a rolling motion, and they will increase unnecessary sliding. Just to avoid that, we use this cage. And of course, uh, these uh, corners are uh, always um, rounded, so that there should not be any stress concentration on this or the way stress concentration is reduced. What else we have in this bearing is a width, larger the width of the bearing, more and more load carrying capacity. For the same inner diameter, we can change the outer diameter, for the same B, same bore diameter, we have a D, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5 and D 2 will be greater than D 1, D 3 will be greater than D 2. But as we are increasing the um, this dimension, space will be considered, space uh, restriction may come. So, depends on the availability of the steps, we can choose any bearing, a lesser outer diameter, more outer diameter, depends on the requirement, depends on the load requirement, depends on the space requirement. An interesting thing is that all these kind of bearings are available in the market. As in my previous lecture, I mentioned about there are more than 20,000 bearings. We name the bearing, we get it. We name the dimension, we get it, but in discrete form, not in continuous form. That is why we need to go ahead with standardization. We need to find out what kind of bearings are available, what kind of class bearing, class of the bearings are available and how they operate, how interact with the load. This uh, diagram shows some sort of the cages. So, the cages or uh, cage uh, material is more like a thin sheet metal formed in a shape in a such a manner that they can, uh, you, uh, they can uh, guide the rolling elements. You can see there is a some sort of distance. One rolling element is not colliding with other rolling element and these cages are riveted. That means, these cages are not going to rotate too much, it may be sliding to some speed. And these are the three views of these cages with the rolling element, this is the side view that is clearly show the cage is not uh, um, over the complete uh, rolling element, it is a covering only some portion of the rolling element. Similarly, in this case you are able to see the rolling elements are not completely covered only some portion for the guiding purpose is used that is required to reduce the sliding between the rolling element and the cage. But depends on the requirement, this cage material can be anything, it can be polymer also with if the temperature or operating temperature is not going to be on higher side or it can be some sort of a steel with a molybdenum disulfide coating or graphite coating or some sort of a, uh, coating of on that surface. So, that there is a lesser friction, lesser wear more and more gliding on the surface. Now, in this uh, slide we have shown only the roller, uh, we have shown only the balls, but there is a possibility the balls can be replaced with a roller or we can think about the needle roller. We have seen the needles 
generally the needle diameter is much lower than the length. Obviously, the length L by D ratio in this kind of uh, needle roller bearing will be roughly 10 plus, length will be minimum 10 times of the diameter. That is why we are uh, using the word uh, needle roller bearing. They are used because of the space restriction, diameter is much smaller. So, wherever the diameter restriction comes and we require a larger load carrying capacity, we can think about a needle roller bearing. This uh, slide shows uh, two arrangements, which is arrangement A, arrangement B for the cylindrical roller bearing and it shows only the part view. We say that there is maybe a central line away from uh, this uh, sketches or we so the only one half of the ring is been shown, not one half is the only the cut section. You see if I pass a cutting plane uh, at the middle plane and uh, remove and on a project, why well, I will be getting this kind of sketch. What is the difference? Difference between this arrangement and difference between uh, this, say that in this arrangement inner ring is a flat, there is no groove arrangement. Of course, when I am using the word flat, do not be confused, it is a flat surface, it is a curvature, but when we are showing on a sketch, yeah, it is a flat. Otherwise, it will be a cylindrical piece, it is a hollow cylindrical piece. Inner ring is always a hollow cylindrical piece, outer ring is also a hollow cylindrical piece. That shows over here from uh, center line to this dimension, this is a hollow, nothing is there, it need to be fitted on the shaft or we say the shaft diameter will be up to this point. After the bearing uh, ring is starts, it stops over here and after the roller starts. So, here in this case there is no groove arrangement, while in this case there is a groove arrangement. We are cutting a groove in outer surface of inner ring. What is the advantage? In this case, it can sustain the axial load. What we are talking about the axial load so, is the load is perpendicular to this x, that will be radial load. If any load is a parallel to the axis, it will be axial load. When you are applying a load axially and the, if there is a no uh, groove arrangement, what will happen? This ring may get slided in one direction or it will move out of the roller. But when this we have a, this kind of arrangement, even if we, if we try to slide, this shoulder is going to restrict the motion, at least some portion, obviously, the some load. We cannot say that it will be infinite uh, load, it can sustain infinite load. Of course, it depends on this uh, strength of the shoulder, there is a possibility of plastic deformation or rupture of the shoulder if we apply accessory load. So, we need to know how much uh, thrust force it can be carried or can be sustained by this roller bearing. It is interesting to note, when we studied uh, uh, in some uh, common book, we say the roller bearings are not meant for the thrust load but this arrangement shows the roller bearings can be used for some thrust load. Maybe the 5 percent of the radial load, 10 percent of the radial load or some, some percent depends on the kind of the arrangement. Well, in this case outer ring is uh, with uh, groove arrangement, there is a possibility of some alternative arrangement when there is a groove at the inner ring, but there is no groove at the outer ring. Depends on the requirement we can make or we say that we can design this kind of uh, bearings and in market all 8 kind of the bearings are available. And this is the projection of uh, cage, what we say that there is a cage which is a guiding the roller. See this arrangement, there is a no cage in this, it is only outer ring and there will be inner ring, there is a no cage. If there is a no cage, what is the problem? These rollers are going to collide with each other, they are in contact and you are able to see there are some pins coming out of this roller. These are the step shafts, they are larger diameter roller first and then uh, sm uh, pointed out or not pointed out means that smaller diameter here just to fix in a ring. That is for the ring arrangement which required they act like a pins. So, that there is a free motion available, but as uh, there are number of rollers there will be more friction and advantage is also there, it can sustain much larger load. Smaller diameter will reduce the load sustainability, larger number of rollers will increase the sustainability, but larger loads, uh, larger rollers are also a problem from the friction point of view. 
that is why we say this kind of bearing show highest coefficient of friction and this higher coefficient of friction is reason for the small diameters sliding speed will be obviously sliding to roller speed rolling motion will be higher side obviously this ratio will be in higher side compared to the normal rollers with L by D is 1 or 0.5 and uh, there will be rubbing of course, the surface is a perfect surface are good and uh, they require slightly more lubricant for the effective reduction in friction. So, there will be a rubbing that is why and uh, then moreover there is a this is a smaller uh, diameter. So, sliding to velo uh, sliding the rolling velocity will ratio will be higher side that is why they have a high coefficient of friction, but they can sustain much larger loads. To understand why they can sustain much larger load, let us take a simple sketches. You say this sketch is in a ring, is a hollow ring, big cylinder, drill a hole in this or make a sheet from the sheet metal in a such a manner or is do some sort of uh, molding and make this kind of ring. Then there is another ring. So, we say there is an inner ring, there is an outer ring then what is missing that is a rolling element. There is a rolling element between inner ring and outer ring and there is a possibility of some clearance between inner ring rolling element and outer ring. When we apply load and if there is a one only the one roller that is going to sustain a highest load obviously the maximum load whatever load is been uh, applied from the inner ring whole load will get transferred to the roller and that load uh, load will be transferred to the outer ring. I mean this roller is going to be subjected to the maximum load whatever if I applying a 1000 Newton load whole 1000 Newton load is going to come on this roller or ball whichever the rolling element which we are using. Suppose we are using the rolling and uh, roller in this case the so, whole 1000 Newton load is going to come on this. Now, we say I want to increase the number of rollers. Let us have a one roller over here. What will happen? This is a solid piece. When it is getting deflected, when the load is applied, it will not be only this much. This ring, this portion of the ring is also subjected to the load. And earlier there was no transmission route, but now when we are incorporating the roller, there is a transmission route also coming over here. Of course, we know very well this is along the line of direction or along the force direction. So, this portion will be subject to maximum load. This roller will not be subjected to that high load. That is why it is shown from red color to some sort of orange color. Orange is a lesser intensity compared to redness. If I place one roller over here, still this roller is going to subject it to the load, but at a lesser magnitude. That is why red maximum load orange slightly lesser than uh, this red color uh, roller and yellow will be lesser than uh, red color roller as well as the orange color roller. As we move on, if I place now a green color or some roller over here, as I mentioned earlier, if there is a clearance, a slight clearance even, then this lower portion will be subjected to the load, but top portion will not be subjected to the load. That is why we are showing with the green there is no load on this roller. Similarly, on this side there will not be any load on this roller. Now, I can say if I want to find out what will be the angle, what will be the load angle, obviously what will be the half load angle if I assume there is a symmetry. If I draw a line here and uh, maybe some line over here we say what is this angle of course, it will be from 0 to 90 degree, 90 degree when there is no clearance that is our understanding. Now, to model this we can arrange using this lecture uh, this uh, relation we say cos phi 1 is equal to C d divided by C d is a diameter clearance divided by 2 into delta r and delta r is a radial shift of inner ring we know under load there will be a subject uh, there will be some sort of deformation as well as uh, uh, shifting of the ring and that need to be incorporated over here. 
right. So, C D is a clearance, if I keep 0 clearance, no clearance at all, even in this situation this phi will be or phi 1 will be 90 degree, because a cos phi 1 is a 0 that means phi 1 will be 90 degree. Now, if we incorporate some clearance, maybe in micron also, maybe say um, 5 micron and the radial shift is by 2 micron or something like that, then it will turn out to be uh, more than this uh, one which is not possible. Naturally, this radial shift need to be more than this to reduce the value uh, lesser than 1 and if that is done that means, we can uh, find out what will be the angular extent of this load. Smaller clearance compared to this shift to delta r will be always recommended lesser clearance will be better from load arrangement point of view from the load sharing point of view. But what we explained here that is an increasing number of rollers. Now, if I keep on increasing the rollers in this area the more and more load sharing will happen by the rollers and the load maximum load which is coming on the any roller will be reduced. That can be explained by developing some relation, but this understanding is helping us we can find out what is 50 percent um, zone of uh, load or load 50 percent load zone that uh, other half will be on this side there is a symmetry. Right? For that purpose what we require a deflection curve. So, when we are applying a load on rolling element, they are going to subject it to elastic deformation. There is a contact force and that can be simply represented in terms of deflection or whether that there is a proportionality constant k and this is a power n. They are not linear, they are curvature that is why they will show non-linear curve uh, non-linear behavior. Linearity to some extent is been uh, there in the roller bearing, they have only curvature on one side in uh, one direction, while the ball bearing or the balls have a curvature in two dimension that is why this an is more for balls, a lesser for the roller bearing. So, this an the power expo exponent is 1.5 of ball bearing and 1.11 is for the roller bearing. This is generally referred in number of books we can uh, see a new book and um, and of course, this is generally done by experimental basis after doing experiment they found that okay, this is the relation by and large this is the relation when we do the analytical expression or we want to find out load distribution. So, we can use this relation there is another possibility of relation that this is sustaining maximum load, but this is sustaining slightly lesser load and there is uh, and this kind of a load is in proportion to the deflection. So, we can substitute uh, that relation we say any time load of any roller depends on what is the extent from the center line. Okay. So, phi is 0 suppose then load will be maximum on that, but phi is maybe say 30 degree then it will be cos 30 power depends on the roller or a ball it will be 1.5 or 1.11. Now, if we sum up because F r which is oh, complete load applied on the this rolling element bearing can be uh, uh, can be figured out can be calculated can be estimated something like this the w cos phi and of course, the, there is a load on this and now we want to resolve in this extreme. We know any component any time load can be divided in a perpendicular direction one will be along this axis other will be along this axis. So, whatever the force comes along this axis will be added, whatever forces comes along this axis and this axis they will cancel each other, they will not um, finally develop any overall load on this. The load which are in this direction opposing this F r only can be summed up that is why we are saying W cos phi here into cos phi and depending the rolling element we can integrate from or we can sum up from phi is equal to minus phi you say this is a minus phi suppose 2 plus phi in this side or we can take anti clockwise or clockwise it does not matter. Generally we are assuming the symmetry both the directions, so arrangement is not going to change whether we are going to go the clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction the this f r will be same. Now, when we develop the relation based on this what we are going to get say f r for the ball can come up in the number of rollers, because we know that phi 
uh, this this phi can be figured out by 2 pi divided by number of rollers. So, number of rollers are going to be there in one way or another way in this expression. When we develop the relation and um, approximate it, what we get f r for the ball bearing is equal to z, z is a number of rollers or number of balls for ball bearing is number of balls divided by 4.37 into maximum load on each element or any element. Of course, each element will be subject to a max load because of the rotation. If once to one time this red roller is here, next time and after rotation, this roller, uh, red roller will come to this place. So, this red uh, orange roller will be in this place, right. So, each roller is going to be subject to the maximum load, right. And uh, that is we say that load on um, uh, when uh, real load on the ball bearing can be figured out by using this number of rollers. And uh, for roller bearing, this is the relations that divide by 4.06 into W max maximum load over here. Now, what is the uh, overall good thing about this is that as the number of elements are increasing, as the number of rolling elements are increasing load carrying capacity is or F r which can be applied on uh, this bearing is increasing continuously right. So, if I am using only the 10 uh, rolling elements load carrying capacity will be smaller. If I change to the 20 rollers of course, depends on the space constraint or if the space is allowing it to the 20 balls or 20 rollers. If we accommodate those then the load capacity will be just double and this is the reason why we when we think about the rolling element bearing from one uh, one company and other company, we need to see the catalog. For the same dimensions, there is a possibility of variable load carrying capacity. In uh, one catalog, we can say that one rolling element bearing is showing some uh, x load, in other catalog it can show 1.1 time or 1.05 times. Unless they go with a perfect standardization, uh, standardization for rolling element, number of elements, uh, cage, uh, cage as well as inner ring and outer ring. They go ahead with the perfect standardization, then there will be same load carrying capacity. Otherwise, there is a possibility of difference load uh, difference in the load carrying capacity. Right. So, we have talked about the roller bearing, we have talked about the needle roller bearing. Now, think about the table roller bearing. This taper we are able to see there is a some sort of inclination as there is a some sort of cone formation and inner ring and outer ring are also inclined. They do not have a, a smooth or we say the surface parallel to the axis. Again this is only one portion of the bearing has been shown. What we are saying there is a inner ring particularly in the taper roller bearing is known as a cone. Not inner ring is not a very common terminology for the taper roller bearing. They use a cone and cup, outer ring is called as a cup. There is a possibility of the groove in a cup as well as in a ring or the, they may avoid it, they provide only one side depend on the load, how the load is been applied on those bearings. And there is a cage, so that um, there is a possibility of separation between the rolling elements we want this kind of bearing to be perfect and uh, low friction and uh, they show the intended function. If there is a fully complemented without cage, then there is a possibility bearing is showing very good characteristics initially and suddenly all the rollers or maybe 3, 4 rollers they come closer or they started gaining more separation because of the wear, because of the uh, seizure, then uh, behavior will change. If you want more consistent performance, more uh, robust performance cages are generally recommended and this is showing a two direction. Now, this kind of a bearing can sustain the radial load which is a perpendicular to the axis of rotation as well as it can be applied in uh, one direction uh, axial load is, is parallel to the axis of rotation and when we apply load in this direction because of this shoulder it can sustain load as well as because of the this taper it can uh, dissolve the forces accordingly and it can uh, reduce the number uh, overall force in magnitude. This is the interesting bearing also. We say that we talk about this um, cylinder of in a straight light profile, but when we merge we say the ball and roller can be combined in a one way uh, not in a, as a separate portion, but the curvature can be given to the rollers. When curvature is given to the rollers not in circumferential direction, but along the axis direction, 
then what will happen? This kind of bearing can show some sort of a, a fluctuation in axis. It can sustain some fluctuation in axis. Where there is a possibility of misalignment. One axis is continuously fluctuating. Is a load is not stationary. In that those situations, we can use this kind of bearings. And what we call is a spherical roller bearing. They have a spherical shape. What we say the merging of ball uh, profile with a roller profile. Or um, some portion, maybe say three fourth, uh, one fourth of this side, one fourth on this side, can be profiled in a such a manner. They have they are getting a spherical shape, and made in a such a manner, it can sustain. There is a one uh, simple sketch shown over here. We can see if I pass over an axis parallel, and this axis is slightly misaligned. In this kind of thing, there is a two row uh, roller bearing is been utilized. Now, it, this shaft can fluctuate because of the, this is spherical, there is a curvature shape over here, there is a curvature shape over here and the rollers are also curvature that this there is a possibility of giving or tolerating some misalignment in bearing. So, whenever there is a misalignment, we can recommend this kind of uh, arrangement or we say this uh, self aligning bearing or a spherical roller bearing or uh, sometime uh, we use a housing which have a this kind of curvature, it will like a ball bearing, but housing is are made in a such a manner they can sustain some sort of a misalignment. Now, uh, we talk about the radial load, we talk about the axial load because that is why we say that bearing can be classified in two major categories. One is a radial roller bearing, radial ball bearing that is a shown over here that the, how the radial load is applied this is a drive or maybe the ball pulley or chain, uh, chain or maybe any conveyor when is a loaded. This uh, bearing which was, uh, is uh, supporting this shaft or the um, this spline or uh, what do we say this uh, piston or whether this uh, small axle whatever in that situation um, radial load will be applied on the bearing. Now, this is a simple uh, cartoon shows that uh, bearing is here and the load is getting transmitted by this guy and this is uh, along the axis. We are saying that there is a spherical uh, or maybe say any bearing at the ball bearing, roller bearing and this is a curvature is given in such a manner there is a more like a tire or a, a seat and uh, when we apply a load there is axis passing in between. So, this will be a thrust load. That is why we say bearing classification is a radial loader bearing, which is often known as a journal bearing, thrust bearing, which is often known as a axial bearing, or combined load bearing, which what we call as a thrust bearing, or we call as a uh, taper roller bearing in a previous uh, slide that can be combined with this. Now, based on um, requirement. The bearings are uh, made with some angle, angle uh, between the uh, rays and the axis of rotation. You can see here this is axis of rotation and this is a ring profile. Now, there is uh, no variation the uh, ring is also flat, this is a flat both are having 0 angle and when we talk about the angle between the rolling element and this also the 0. Same thing in the cylindrical rolling bearing. So, these bearings cannot sustain much external thrust load, which is have wherever that this alpha is 0, thrust load carrying capacity will be negligible. And whatever the thrust load carrying capacity will come, will come because of the shoulders, whatever the shoulders are uh, made over here because of that only. Now, in this case, with this axis and this profile is having some inclination, and we try to produce and we try to show it here that uh, if I arrange a ball and see the axis, uh, of course, axis is, will be every side, but wherever this contact and this contact is happening, this point contact and this point contact that is going to decide what is the angle of inclination and that shows that some angle is a 45 degree and similarly 45 degree from this axis. So, this is a what we call it this kind of bearing can sustain the thrust force as well as the radial force and what we know as, know as this as the angular contact bearing. The ball bearing cylindrical roller bearing, angular contact bearing, the contact point one contact point here, one contact point here we are joining this contact points and that line which is joining this contact point is making 45 degree angle um, 
width axis as well as the perpendicular axis. In this case, we are generally measuring the perpendicular axis. So, this is 45 degree and uh, well we can say the angular contact bearing can sustain axial as well as the radial load. Similarly, the taper roller bearing and uh, we, uh, we studied in the previous slide where the, there was a cone, there was a taper angle along the uh, on the surfaces of uh, roller. Well, however, in this case we are able to see there is no taper on the roller, it is the only the ring uh, rings have a this taper or uh, we said the cup and cone have some taper, but the roller does not have a taper. So, this kind of taper roller bearings are also possible and there is a we are able to see again that there is a some angle the 45 degree over here which uh, allowing this kind of bearing to sustain radial as well as the thrust force. Now, this is a spherical roller bearing again um, because of the change in the, this curvature, they are able to sustain the thrust load and of course, they are uh, able to sustain the radial load also. Coming to the major side or in this case majorly the load carried uh, is a radial, some load will be carried as in thrust direction or an, uh, along the axis direction. Well, in this category major th load is the thrust load and we require some support to sustain the radial load. So, in this case a spherical roller bearing you can see the curvature is a spherical in nature they are meant mainly for the thrust load along the axis, but to some extent if there is a some sort of radial force this you know, these rings can sustain that. Similarly, for this ball bearing the cylindrical roller bearing we are able to see the cylindrical roller bearing and this and this there is a 90 degree phase. What if the ball uh, roller was shown here, here the roller is shown perpendicular to that the other view of that. So, that means in this and the ring arrangement is remaining same. So, in this case it can sustain the um, any load or the maximum load in along the axis direction. In this direction it cannot sustain a maximum load, it can sustain only small portion because of uh, restriction because of the constraint from the ring side. Otherwise there is no uh, load carrying capacity along the radial direction. So, this is mainly for the thrust side from the axial load carrying capacity. Now, there is a another one also uh, if I uh, say um, thrust load is applied uh, in a such a manner um, it can sustain perpendicular the axis and this kind of arrangement can be made uh, to uh, sustain major thrust load. So, what we say that there is a radial load perfect radial load in this case then combination then major uh, thrust load and then this is complete thrust load in this case these bearings are just sustaining only the thrust load no um, arrangement as such uh, from uh, uh, radial load point of view there is not much scope for the radial load. So, with this I am uh, completing uh, present lecture we will continue the rolling element bearing in our next lecture thanks thanks for your attention. Thank you.